So you mentioned, obviously, we've talked a little bit about Arsenal in terms of they kind of brought, they, they bought Saturday night, didn't they? They purchased them and brought them in-house. So um, were you based there or were you based still in the US? How, how did it work and how many kind of, how many people were in the Stat DNA team at that point? Yeah, I think when we were bought, we might have been like five or six, a pretty small team. Mm. Um, and then at the maximum, I think it was 15 people. Okay. And so most of us were based in the US. Um, over time, we then started having people full time at London Colney and you know, there's a number of pros and cons to being remote. Um, we say this almost every day uh, in our company, but training grounds are like some of the worst places to do work. Um, they're just not at all conducive to, you know, the, the type of work that we really do, which requires like deep thought and a lot of concentration. I mean, it's, you know, it's a place buzzing with, with energy and people moving about and having conversations, but um, yeah, it's hard to really get a lot of work done there. Um, and so being remote allowed us to have a little bit more space to kind of do that thing, uh, that type of thinking. It also prevented us or like reduced the impact of groupthink. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of times when you're kind of doing like a team performance review, that's that can be heavily influenced by the coaching staff and what they're kind of like seeing and, and worried about. And uh, I have this phrase that I've picked up. It's uh, called majoring the minor, where a lot of times people will kind of make a, a really big deal out of something that's really maybe a little bit uh, inconsequential. And we see that a lot with coaching staffs where there might be something that they've been working on in training, hasn't really worked the way that they wanted. And so that's like the reason that the team is, is struggling and they might be missing like something that's mm -hmm. just like really, really obvious. So having that kind of um, separation to avoid that, I think was a little bit beneficial. I mean, the downside is obviously you don't have those personal relationships. You're not part of every single conversation, but yeah, uh, I guess that's a long way of answering. Like, yeah, we were yeah. mostly, mostly remote the whole time. Cool. So obviously that was to, because Arsenal didn't really have at the time you mentioned that did, that was their data analysis department, but in terms of, other staff that were within the club that you would kind of integrate with in terms of like the scouting department, which was, I'm presuming was, was in place at the time. And then like the, the performance analysts or like the more video analysts, did you integrate with them and how, and how did that work and how did that look? Yeah. I mean, so each person within staff DNA, so as we kind of grew, we would have various different touch points so that it wasn't, you know, everybody talking to mm -hmm. everybody, but yeah, certainly, I mean, huge touch points with, um, scouting and recruitment and sporting director, very good close relationship with the performance analysis department and not just with the first team, but down through the academy as well. Um, so doing a lot of work um, kind of with the the coaching staffs at, at all the different levels um, through our football club. Um, yeah, I mean, we even forayed into the uh, high performance department, medical department, um until they started having so many questions that it's like okay well you guys need somebody dedicated on site that that can answer those because um you know those are the types of people that are just so used to having numbers um very comfortable with it and so they had yeah loads and loads of questions but yeah i mean uh for better or worse we were basically involved in kind of any department that had kind of data-driven questions yeah, and and did the, the the focus change over the time you were there, Sarah? In terms of maybe was it more recruitment when you started, and then it added more in terms of post pre match, or was it always a mix of everything, or did one or did one kind of take a bit of precedent over the other in terms of resources? Yeah, I mean, it's always been a bit of a mix of everything. Um, you know, compared to a lot of analytics departments, we were very very well staffed, so I think there was a lot of ambition to kind of try to help as many people as possible. Um, but then, you know, certainly as kind of the decision-making hierarchy of the club changed, like how much we invested in each um, mm. aspect kind of changed. So, you know, there was a, a period in the club where um, we weren't having as much influence over recruitment as we would have wanted. And so that's when we kind of shifted to academy. Um, mm. And, you, you know, that was an area where they were much more kind of, receptive to the type of work we could do and it's you know paid huge huge dividends yeah 